Hi everyone, I'm Any New Province, and this week we're playing Red Deck Burns for Net Benefits, the series where we explore the benefits of net decking in Popper. Red Deck Burns is an awesome mono red aggressive deck that comes from Giulio Carducci, who used it to top eight a big Popper tournament in Rome earlier this September. The reason I'm calling this deck Red Deck Burns has a lot to do with its sideboard, and we will get to that soon. Before we do, I just just want to let you know that you can like the video or subscribe to the channel down below. I'd seriously appreciate it. It's a great way to let me know you're enjoying everything, and it really encourages me to keep making great popper content. So, Red Deck Burns looks a lot like a goblin deck at first glance, but there are a couple of notable exceptions. The first exceptional card is something I've never seen in a red deck win shell, let alone a goblin's deck. It's Insolent Neonate. It costs one red mana for a 1 1 vampire with menace, and you can discard a card and sacrifice it to draw a new card. Aggressive decks like this have the inherent weakness of getting stonewalled by something like an Augur of Bolas. If your opponent only has one of them, Insolent Neonate can still attack around it. Also, the ability to just look at a new card off the top of your deck if you don't need Insolent Neonate on board anymore is really powerful. The other spell pulling us back in the red deck wins direction away from goblins is Burning Tree Emissary. It costs two hybrid gruel mana for a human shaman that's a 2-2. Burning Tree Emissary represents one of the most powerful things you can do in the popper format. That is, it's technically a free spell, because when Burning Tree Emissary enters the battlefield, you add red and green to your mana pool. If you've ever been on the receiving end of one of those Burning Tree Emissary starts where your opponent commits one or two of them and some extra creatures in just their second turn, you know how scary that can be. While those two cards do pull us away from being a classic goblins deck, this next package pulls us directly back into it by producing a ton of tokens and flooding the board with goblins. First up, we have the very recently printed Goblin an instigator. It costs one and a red for a 1-1 one, one that creates another 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token when it enters the battlefield. Goblin instigator often serves as copy 5 through 8 of this next spell, which is so powerful of course you'd want 8 copies of it. It's Mog War Marshal. Mog War Marshal costs one and a red for a goblin warrior 1-1 one, one with echo 1 and a red, which means at the beginning of your upkeep, if this came under your control since the beginning of your last upkeep, you have to sacrifice it unless you pay its echo cost. I'm thankful that a lot of decks running Mog War Marshal close out games quickly. That's because I could sit there and tank on whether you should pay its echo cost forever. If you decide not to, it's okay, because when Mog War Marshal enters the battlefield or dies, you create another 1-1 one, one Red Goblin creature token. Once we've gone wide with all of our token producers that we've cast off the mana generated by our early Burning Tree Emissary, we're hoping to hit this next spell and swing for lethal super early. This is Goblin Bushwhacker. It costs 1 red for a 1-1 one, one with kicker 1 red mana, which means you may pay an additional 1 red mana as you cast this spell. When Goblin Bushwhacker enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain haste until end of turn. While we would love to get the flashy win by flooding the board with tokens and then running out a Goblin Bushwhacker, we've got an excellent plan A in the meantime, and that is cast a ton of aggressive one-drops. The first of those great one-drops is Goblin Cohort. It costs one red mana for a 2-2 Goblin Warrior, but it can't attack unless you've cast a creature spell this turn. That's okay, we've got lots of creature spells. Mog Conscripts is functionally the same as Goblin Cohort. It can only attack unless you've cast another creature spell this turn, but we're really glad to have copies 5 through 8 of our 1 mana 2 twos. Finally, we have Intimidator Initiate, which really helps to keep us promoting damage to our opponent's face with its ability. It costs 1 red mana for a 1-1 one, one Goblin Shaman, and whenever a player casts a red spell, you may pay 1 generic mana. If you do, target creature can't block this turn. Goblin's favorite way to punch through a clogged up board or to fog opponent's removal is to simply cannibalize themselves for more damage. That's why we've got some sack outlets to do just that. Our sack outlets are Mog Raider and Goblin Sledder. These creatures are also functionally the same, but it should be obvious by now that our deck loves a little bit of redundancy. They both cost one red mana, four one ones that allow you to sacrifice a goblin to give target creature plus one, plus one until end of turn, and they're almost as good with our go wide plan as our goblin bushwhackers. Finally, our last package is a little bit of burn that can double as interaction. That package starts off with a goblin arsonist. Goblin arsonist cost one red mana for a 1-1, and when it dies, you may have it deal one damage to any target. Being able to sacrifice our goblin
goblin arsonist at instant speed to kill a spell stutter sprite that's trying to counter another one of our creatures is obviously fantastic, but goblin arsonist also just makes combat a nightmare for other aggressive decks. We're also running four copies of Lightning Bolt, the best interactive burn in the format. It costs one red mana for an instant that deals three damage to any target. Finally, our last non-land card is Fire Blast. It costs four red red for an instant, and don't worry, we'll probably never pay six for it because you may sacrifice two mountains rather than paid this spell's mana cost. Fire Blast deals four damage to any target. All right, let's have a look at this mana base. They're just 17 basic untapped mountains. You don't play tap lands in red deck wins. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, let's have a look at this sideboard, which I think is the most interesting part about this build because it allows it to transform almost entirely into a burn deck. It starts with three copies of Chain Lightning, just a slightly worse Lightning Bolt, but a Lightning Bolt all the same. We also have three copies of Rift Bolt, a spell you never see outside of burn decks, but it can be a Lightning Bolt if you want it to be. More Lightning Bolts in Lava Spike here, and then two Reckless Abandons if you don't think your opponent's going to have counter magic when you sacrifice a creature to deal four damage to them. We also have two copies of Searing Blaze, which are awesome in matchups where we both want to be faster than our opponent and want to interact with them. And finally, we have two copies of Flaring Pain. If our opponent is on Fogs, we're going to want to be able to attack for lethal despite their moments piece. And there you have it, Red Deck Burns by Giulio Carducci. Congratulations again on your finish at Poppergeddon in Rome earlier this September. We're going to take this deck into a league at twitch.tv slash any new province. We're there every Monday night at 7 p.m. Atlantic time playing competitive popper decks. Before I go, I just want to remind you that you can like the video or subscribe to the channel down below. I'd seriously appreciate it. It's a great way to let me know you've enjoyed everything, and it really encourages me to keep making great popper content. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech, and hopefully I'll see you on Monday night.